Hey YouTube, welcome back to another History Teacher Reacts video with Mr. Terry as I continue my search for historical knowledge here on YouTube. Alright, we're heading back to the Admiral Yi series. We're at episode 5 out of 6, so we're getting close to the end of the series. Um, this has been awesome here by uh, Extra History. If you have not subbed to them or not seen their videos, go down in the description to make sure that you uh, follow them. One of the best history-related YouTube channels out there, I think. So the Admiral Yi uh, series has been awesome so far. Uh, we've seen his success against Japan as uh, the Japanese were invading through Korea to try to get to China. And Admiral Yi has proven time and time again that he's a capable leader that is helping to protect the Koreans. Um, and I'm um, assuming more of the same, but we'll see uh, what's going on here. So let's go ahead and get started. So this is called, uh, this this episode specifically, is for, uh, episode 5, is Martial Lord of Loyalty. All right, let's check it out. When we left off, Yi had crushed the Japanese at the Battle of Myongyan and was busy rebuilding the Korean Navy after their disastrous losses while he was being falsely accused. Now, just as he's beginning to coordinate with the Chinese Navy on how to prosecute the war, something major happens. Maybe the one event that can truly change the course of this war. Oh? Hideyoshi dies. Ooh, Six leader of Japan. Years and four months after the fateful Japanese landing on Korea, the man who started it all, the man who envisioned a vast Asian empire radiating out from Japan, died. This is one of the first times Japan has really tried to establish, like, a foreign empire outside of their... Um, archipelago you know go in there so it was quite a it was quite a uh, ambitious att or attempt by the japanese to go into mainland china because um, they haven't done that very much um through 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 history here and so um with hideyosha dying i mean that's that's a big big loss um at least in potentially what the long-term plans could be for japan so i guess interesting what i'm gonna be wonder here is um when when we know when he dies here is the next set of leadership gonna have the same ambitions or not this was a sea change. Hideyoshi had been holding the Japanese in Korea by sheer force of will. As soon as he died, the council of men who ran Japan in his stead all looked at one another and said, Does anyone here actually want to keep fighting Korea? Okay, <laughs> show of hands, who wants to stay in Korea? Nobody? Uh, no. All right then. With that, they agreed we to out. pull the Japanese forces out of there as soon as they could negotiate a deal which would let them withdraw their forces safely. But the Koreans were not so eager for peace after seeing hundreds of thousands of Ooh, their countrymen slaughtered during Hideyoshi's invasion. So Admiral Yi continued to coordinate with the Chinese forces to bottle up the Japanese in one of their last strongholds, the port of Sunchen. The Chinese army closed around the city on land, and the Korean and Chinese navies blockaded the port. Seeing the situation as hopeless, the Japanese commander decided the best option he had left was to try to bribe everybody. <laughs> Each time it seemed as though he was succeeding in bribing the Chinese contingents, Yi shamed them into falling back in line. <laughs> Seeing no hope of water. peaceful retreat, the Japanese commander had one last plan. He dispatched a messenger boat to slip through the Chinese lines and tell the other major Japanese garrison to deploy all their ships and rendezvous with him as they tried to break their way through the Chinese and Korean blockade. But Yi got word of this plan, and knew that he must prepare. The next night, November 15th, 1598, long after the sun had fallen below the horizon, and the water had faded from blue to deep black, Yi told his forces to slip away from the blockade. They would try to intercept the reinforcing fleet in the fateful Noryang Strait. Near 2 a.m., the joint Korean and Chinese fleet fell upon the resting Japanese ships. At first it was chaos, cannon lighting up the water at night, but soon the Japanese tried to regroup. Despite being caught off guard, they still had 500 ships to the combined 150 of Yi and the Chinese. That's the, that's the scenario with every Yi-led battle. They're always outnumbered, but then how many times have we seen where they're like, they fought and they destroyed all the Japanese ships and not one Korean ship was destroyed. It is still interesting to me that, yeah, they, they, they feel confident enough that with the Japan, with the, with the Japanese, I mean, um, establishing a treaty that wasn't good enough they wanted to like go after the japanese not content just to sit there but interesting they feel interesting that they feel that that is um worthy of their time at this moment to go after it but i mean what's their big korea's big plans i mean that it's not like they're going to try to go and take over japan or something it's just just stick a f fork in them and try to hurt as much as you can on the way out of the war i mean that that's look that looks a little bit more about what's what's happening here and moreover, they were fueled by desperation. If they lost here, who knows if they'd ever see Japan again? 
But the Allied forces had two advantages going for them as well. For one, they had once again caught the Japanese in a strait where they could not easily maneuver their massive fleet, and two, even if they could maneuver, many of their ships were transports, which were only useful for boarding and arquebus fire in a fight. In desperation, the Japanese attacked, driving their ships through the withering hail of the enemy cannonade. Unfortunately for Yi, the Chinese commander, who wasn't used to fighting the Japanese and had no experience with Yi's long-range form of naval warfare, charged forward to meet the Japanese fleet and prepared to engage them in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Mm. The Chinese That's commander tough, was surrounded. Dozens of Japanese ships descended on the Chinese flagship. Yi ordered his own ship to attempt a rescue. Yi's flagship plunged into the midst of the enemy. He was committed now. It would be fierce, close combat the rest of the way. Exactly the type of fight Yi had always tried to avoid. The vessels were so close. That yeah, I mean that's that's one thing Yi always understood was yeah the the distance. I mean you've got to be able to take advantage, well not take advantage, but lessen the the pressure that comes with having far fewer of your soldiers, of your ships or whatever than the Japanese who almost always outnumber them. So going up to try to get more closer to combat, that's. That doesn't sound like a good idea. That unarmed Korean sailors began throwing bundles of burning sticks down on the enemy decks. As Yi's ship broke through the waves, he spotted three of the enemy's admirals standing on the deck of one of the Japanese ships attacking his ally. And so, Yi drew his bow and loosed. One of the admirals fell. Oh, For a moment, there was almost sniped. silence in the midst of the fighting, as everybody looked to see where that arrow had come from. Then one of the Japanese admirals roused himself from his shock and shouted that it was Yi. All the ships must attack Yi. All the Japanese vessels turned and began to give chase to Yi's flagship. But now it was Get the Chinese her. Admiral's turn to take action, and his ships tore into the vessels pursuing Yi. Soon the fight was on the deck of the Chinese Ooh. flagship. This looks like the final scene of a movie now. Hand-to-hand -hand combat with the leaders on a ship. There's just the two left, right? <laughs> Chinese Dao sparking against Japanese Katana. In the end, the Japanese boarding parties were repelled, but many from both sides lay dead on the deck. As dawn began to bring light back to the scene, everyone could see how badly the Japanese were faring. They attempted to flee, but Yi would have none of it. These people who had come to his land, who had despoiled his home, who had slaughtered his people and endangered his nation, no, he would not let them flee. He grabbed the mallet from the ship's drummer and began to beat the war drum himself, urging wow. his ships to go ever faster. The haunting echo of the drum pushed the fleet on. red eyes his right now. pounded the Japanese, bit at their heels. His fleet moved like it never had before, the drums steadily beating like the call of the god of war. They were upon the Japanese. Cannons roared, arquebuses answered. Shouts and screams were heard as ship after ship was caught by the pursuing fleet, possessed by the beat of the drums of war. Interesting, again, because this, this battle didn't have to happen at all. The Japanese are willing to leave, so this is, this is a Korean-initiated one. But right. then, Keep just that in mind. for an instant, the drums faltered. Seen by no one but his son, his nephew, and a loyal servant, Yi had been struck by a stray arquebus ball. They rushed to his oh side no. as he slumped against Yee. the drum, trying to aid him, asking if there was anything they could do. With his last breath, he said to them, We are about to win this war. Keep beating the drum. Do oh not no. let anyone know of my death. His son picked up the mallet and continued the beat. Dressed in Yi's armor, his son and his nephew took up the command. For hours, they were Yi, commanding as he would, with all his ability and skill. None of Yi's officers ever realized he had fallen until, as the battle was closing, the Chinese flagship was once again surrounded. Yi's son ordered his ship into the thick. They darted forward, breaking the cordon around the Chinese flagship, helping the Chinese to escape. The fighting was fierce, but it was near the last of it. And as the day closed, the Chinese admiral sailed toward Yi's flagship and called out to thank Yi for saving him to invite Yi to celebrate the glorious day together. Except he's not but he was around. met by Yi's son. Instantly, he knew what had happened, and three times he threw himself to the deck, wailing and crying out, no. Even after death, you saved my life. This was the last battle of the war. 300 Japanese ships were destroyed Yi. or captured. After this, the remaining Japanese garrisons would either be captured one by one by the Chinese and Korean forces, or slip back to Japan to fight one last struggle before Tokugawa's ascension as shogun. At last, the Imjin War was at an it's end. Over. Hideyoshi's dream of a Japanese empire was broken. Korea was free, but Yi would never see it. Thousands turned out to see his body returned to his small home village. People lined the road and wailed at the passing of a man they may never have met. The Chinese admiral wrote for him a eulogy, and even the court and the king tried to make their recompense. 
and so passed the man so ill-treated in life, so often demoted and accused, the man who would forever be known as the Martial Lord of Loyalty. Oh sevens for Admiral Yi. All right, just to see now, because um, there's one more episode, uh, how they're going to sum him up, kind of, and, and I'm assuming that's mostly what's going to happen now, is just kind of, yeah, sum him up that way. Uh, but you see how he goes down? Goes down fighting in a battle that he will actually initiate, right? Uh, which I guess says a lot about him, because he's always been kind of more defensive and always preparing that way, but with the Japanese willing to finally have this treaty and be on the run, um, who wants to go after him so it's it's the koreans taking a true offensive in a battle again that didn't have to happen because the the fighting was going to be over um so that shows a lot and it showed a lot with him uh, but he was getting on the front lines and getting into like hand-to-hand combat and all that stuff and um willing to, to to put himself i guess on the line there to to save korea so um yeah, what a fascinating figure um, so far that you know that we're learning uh, that I've learned about him and learned now he's 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 passed away in this now in this timeline, but um, how successful he was, right? And how pivotal he was, and uh, you know now looking at this, how easily it seems that Korea could have fallen um, at this time and been a part of a greater Japanese empire uh, empire at this time, but able to overcome some of those uh, a lot of those odds and with his ingenuity um, able to defeat the Japanese, which it, again it seems like on paper were definitely you'd project to be the victors in this situation uh, but that's going to help protect you know korea um, japan with uh, the tokugawa are going to go on a, a far more internal um, focus for the next couple centuries um, and and focus inward there and actually japan sees kind of an internal golden age um, in this this tokugawa era a lot of people refer to that as a kind of japanese uh, golden age of sorts so, but this is just one of those stories of Korea that is, is so historically been caught in this tug of war between the powers of uh, China and Japan. And it's been a, a major part of their history is dealing with uh, imperial ambitions of their neighbors. And it also helps to find a lot about the Korean mentality now, which is one of anti-imperialism, right? Because Korea's history is, is it's like... <laughs> The major moments are of that, of fighting imperial powers and trying to maintain independence and maintain a culture, which, again, is very um, very much ingrained in Korean culture um, today, North Korea, South Korea, um, all of it. All right, well, great. Uh, looking forward to wrapping this up. If you like this original video, go down to the link below. There'll be a link to it, so make sure you give them a view, give them a thumbs up, a like, sub, sub to Extra History if you have not. Um, they do awesome work there. Uh, if you'd like to be a part of our community, make sure you sub as well. Um, enable notifications so you can know when live premieres and live streams are. Join our Discord server if you'd like to be part of our um, uh, very large historical community that we have. Links to all that stuff is down below. Um, thank you to everyone that's been joining with channel memberships. You see down by the sub button, uh, uh, you will see uh, an ability to join our channel. Um, that's awesome. It's a way to support the channel. Also, uh, gives you a lot of features for the live premieres and live uh, streams that we do you get all kinds of emotes and uh, badges and all that kind of stuff it's another way to support the channel along with of course just viewing and other ways of donating but thank you so much for doing that um, just one more thing this video series was chosen by our patrons if you have not joined a patron and you feel like uh, feel like that there'll be a link down below um, tiers start as low as a dollar a month which gets you at least access to the polls that get uh, videos featured onto this channel so it's another way you can support the channel have a little more say on what goes on here all right with that we'll go ahead and wrap it up here we'll see you next time bye